Welcome everybody in the meeting and also joining afterwards, um, as I know most people uh, do. So um, we're going to go through the op social roadmap for Q3. As usual, I'm going to start with um, a little summary of uh, what we've done. Um, for gonna explain a little bit the roadmap of Q2, where we are, what we did, and then uh, gonna move forward to a Q3 roadmap split in the core extension and then the decoupled project. Um, afterwards, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what we're doing outside of this in terms of initiatives. And, and then there's room for Q&A if uh, needed. So, um, for everybody joining afterwards or listening in afterwards, um, also feel free to leave um, comments in the um, in the comment section of of, of uh, community talks. So, uh, if you have any questions or so, please feel free to reach out to us. So, quick summary of Q two. Um, I want to highlight a few things that we've been working on. Um, one for us was definitely the monetization, implementing a Stripe connection, and also working on the paid membership. So um, that was the first part of it. I'm going to come back later to the second part where we wanted to um, explore the possibilities of um, connecting payments to open social. And for us, the first step was really like allowing um, an overall payment structure within open social, connecting to Stripe, being able to um, connect custom roles to it, and then define on different levels, who can access what and what price tag is attached to this. So um, I think the paid membership is a great first step. And I'm, I know that there are a few clients of ours who already handle that use case. Um, the next step will be then the ticketing, which I um, explain a little bit more later. A second part is um, the email notifications. So we already worked in Q1 on improving the notifications on the technical and architectural level. We also implemented a complete new structure to it in terms of copy, in terms of um, the um, call to actions that are implemented in the mails and the whole overall uh, look and feel and structure of the mails within. So I, we hope that this will really improve uh, click-through rates, that this will prove clarity. We have uh, worked on individualizing the subjects of each mail. So um, we, we are looking forward to, to test this when Ren rolled out. We benchmark all um, email click-throughs where possible and we'll compare it to after the roll, rollout to see if that really improves on which specific emails there are still some issues and how we can improve further. I think this will also come back in generally the notification activity streams, all of this engagement and informational components will come back later this year. So, and then the third thing I wanna highlight is the real-time chat. Again, I also mentioned this already, or we talked about it already in the Q2, a roadmap meeting where we worked on it in Q1, um, implementing the group, ch the, the chat in general. And now we extended on this with an improved UI and with a group chat feature. So that means not a chat for groups, but a functionality where you can add multiple people into the chat. So we are now at full feature completion or parity that we compared to the messaging functionality and some extra already. So I think the group chat is a and generally the chat is gonna be a great alternative for, um, for the messaging uh, as a real-time component. Next to this, um, there are some ex extensions where we have a certain vision on where we start working on it, which will go through um, Q3, Q4, some maybe even a bit longer. We'll be experimenting also with a few things. Um, one of them is the cross-posting that I wanted to mention here at least that we've been working on it. Usually we started working on it with clients on specific use cases. Gonna test it out there and iterate then with the feedback on it and try to bring it then back to the overall product. Because they are new additions or complex use external services or something like this. We didn't want it to put it out there immediately, but we just gonna start working on it in a small scale, 
test it out and then I'm going to bring it back as I mentioned. So one of them is, for example, the cross posting to multiple groups. I know this has been requested quite a bit. There are quite some UX, um, UI and um, also technical challenges to solve, especially with aggregating notifications and so forth. So we are testing this now in a community um, where, where the use case is quite straightforward because all groups have the same visibility, accessibility, all of them are just public, all of them are just plainly accessible. So all UX conflicts between different visibility, accessibility, permission levels do not appear here. So we're gonna see how it works on a technical level and then try to tackle within the next half year um, the UX challenges and try to bring it back to the product. Uh, another thing that also is on the roadmap where we didn't completely reach the goal that we set ourselves, so I still consider this an MVP feature, um, is the organization profiles. This is something that is already in the product, but we build up on it to give organizations a complete own page. This is currently only containing some additional information that you can now attach to this organization. And the vision on this is that we want to build it up to have a complete um, access control to have a possibility of admitting people, controlling who can attach this, and also making this page even more customizable than it is now. Two more things here on this MVP feature section, which is posting content to other sites. So this is connected to the decoupled project. So, and um, as, as probably all of you know, as we are working on a decouple, decoupling of social, so removing the front end from the back end of open social, which gives us uh, a few opportunities outside of purely the freedom of how we create the, the front end for open social. So that means we're going to build everything in an API first approach. And that means that it allows us also to send dedicated information to other sites to consume. So here we're gonna run a trial where people um, with another Drupal, with a flat Drupal website that they use as an external site, gonna uh, post primarily discussion and challenges, but also other topics and events in the future on their site in blocks where they basically say, this is for open social content and it should pull content X, Y, Z based on those variables. And um, we are in the process of building the APIs for that so that this site can then consume public content for now. This will be extended to the whole of open social, which is needed for the decouple project. But here we are already running a trial in, uh, with public content now on specific entities, how we can use it to open open social up more to other platforms and websites. Um, the last point here to mention is the CRM integration for. Uh, I already mentioned this the, the last time. It was actually on the same point, but it's still relevant and it's still ongoing. So we have been working on Salesforce and CVCRM and we, have, we are working on MS Dynamics. This was actually scheduled to be finished in Q2, which was pushed a little bit further into Q3. We are still working hard on it and trying to, to realize it. Um, micro Am I still there? Yes. Okay, I froze for a second, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so, but MS Dynamics um, uh, just has some complications that we need to overcome, but but we are trying, we are aiming here also for a, for a trial to run with a client of ours um, in maybe uh, August. So, um, Here's a quick rundown of everything we've done. Basically, um, I'm just gonna leave it here for a few seconds, gonna mention a few things that we didn't achieve. I striped out the organization profiles. It should, the plan was to have it ready uh, for launch. As I mentioned quickly, it is improved, but not completely where we want it to be. So we're gonna improve further on that. We um, did not make the matchmaking that was planned to be delivered here. And we adjusted some of the goals, which are primarily connected to uh, translations, which we've worked on very hard in this during the summer, and which, as usually translation do, turn out a little bit to be to be a little bit more of a challenge than we anticipated. But we really wanted to provide the option to a be multilingual on sites, 
and B, to extend open source law to a near completion of translation in a few more languages, which is um, Spanish, French, German, and Arabic. So um, here we hope for uh, end of July um, rollout of those languages. And we, ex we needed to do some work to include all the extensions. So this is especially also, I think, interesting for communities that are already having you know, social in these languages, because that means in a, I, as we hope that there's going to be, if those features are enabled and the extensions are additionally enabled, that they do not have yet and translated with that we translated with their help will have ready translations for for the whole of open social including ideally the site manager structures this is obviously an ongoing process there are i think in total like seventy thousand strings in open social so it's quite a project also to map them out to see which are relevant and so forth so um uh, everybody who encounters things that are not translated please help us and send them through um so then um, I'll move on towards the Q3 roadmap. One of the things I want to mention is at the beginning, before we go into the categories of the different, um, different product components, is that we're going to focus on the groups. So I think most of our communities use groups, and I think most of them are more or less at least happy with the state they're in. There are some technical and UX restrictions though, why are we gonna focus on it? And A, as I mentioned, the core, uh, it's a core feature of open social. I think it's very important to categorize open social communities on a topical level, on a geographical level, um, to create subgroups for management purposes, to determine um, access and permission controls and so forth. So we know it really works and we are in the process of kind of transitioning from this preset structured groups to a more flexible approach that allows communities to really create the groups they need in any case. So while we've done that transition already last year, there are still some technical remnants why we wanna, why we wanna clean this up. And that's also, I'm gonna jump here basically to the technical benefits already, which is, um, that there are some updates in the core module that we're using. So we really want to be up to date. That helps maintainability, that helps, helps security, that helps also the stability of the group feature itself. So, and in the process, we can be ready for the next step that we want to do with this, with this feature, which is increase the flexibility and allow um, enabling and disabling certain entity types. So that means if you need a group that doesn't have events connected in the future, you will be able to disable those events. Or if you need a discussion group, you can enable the discussions, but remove, for example, blogs or topics and so forth. So we really want to have this flexibility. And in the end, also, by the way, uh, flexible group pages where you can have sort of dashboard functionality where you can determine how the about page looks like what are what is relevant information for each group so we want to give it an even more important place in the product but for that we need to take a step back and remove these things th these things that are leftovers or that are remnants from 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 first approaches from all the parts of the product um that can be also seen here in the in the core uh, roadmap for Q3. So um, there are two big components that are focusing on the group module, which is A, the group module update, which is connected to Drupal, and then the migration to flexible groups. So that means we're going to fully migrate where possible into the flexible group system. That means, um, so for everybody who is using closed group, open groups, and so forth for their platform, it will have the full feature Broad and and more, so it will um, cover all of those cases. All of the already established groups going to stay the same and going to be fully usable. So there's no concern there of not being backwards compatible. We will make sure within this migration that all of the use cases that are currently set up at any of the platforms that use open social within the SaaS structure will be future will be also supported in the future. Another really big point that we want to focus on is the Drupal 9 compatibility. And this is also connected to the group um, components because group is in core and to be Drupal 9 ready, we need to do this update. So 
Apple 8 is going to come end uh, of support November 2nd. Um, and I, I think, and um, this is really important for us to be Drupal 9 ready by then to make sure that our complete open social core can move towards Drupal 9 and be future proof with that. So this is something we are tackling already to have enough time to be really ready when the when when the when the time approaches in end of the year. So for the extension and for the SaaS team, we're gonna focus on um, a few things that um, that we already started earlier this year. One of the things is the extent extension of the gamification. So we applied the gamification feature now to a trial run for a trial run to a platform where we um, saw some where we get gained some learnings from from this implementation. So this is definitely something that we want to implement that where we want to hone the feature where we want to make sure that it really works on a technical level very smooth, but also that we want to improve where we want to improve on the visual on the visualization of gamification. Especially we created a milestone system, we created a point system, rankings and so forth. And all of those works in the back work in the back end, but um, they do not have yet a very prominent place in the front end. There was a conscious decision back then. So we wanted to focus on the engine, on all the possibilities, on different use cases, triggers, action and so forth. So that we can test it properly that have we, we have done now. And now we're gonna focus on giving it a place to also not only show it for the site on content managers, but also to showcase rankings, badges, milestones and challenges and so forth towards other users and to make it a real living gamification feature. And um, then there is um, the app development. So I, I think also a few uh, might know this already that we're working towards a more um, native app approach. Um, the intended launch for this is end of August, beginning of September. So this is one of the tasks of the SaaS team to support this app improvement. Um, this means there's going to be a second app available at the moment. There was only a complete white label custom solution for every for every uh, community available. This will change from then on that there is a basically one app to rule them all approach, um, similar to Slack for those who, who use it, for example, where it is uh, open social app then that you download not a specific client app, but an open social app where the user then can select his or her community to connect to and have um, that that just reduces greatly the effort that we need to do to maintain it, to get it up and for launch and to so we can make it really accessible for, for all of the clients with also a little bit smaller budgets than this really um, bigger custom fully white labeled app and um, once the community is connected this will be and the user is in there that will be normally an open source community how it will be on the web so there's no not going to be a big difference except for the entrance point that you can connect an app to to your installation to to this app that you download um furthermore we're gonna tackle more monetization so there is still there are still some steps to do for the membership payment which we're gonna round up beginning of july um and then the the next step is going to be the ticketing so ticketing in terms of purchasing entrance passes to certain entities so that's obviously for for events so that can be monetized it can also be not monetized by the so the ticketing has two components. A, it has the payment process and B, it has the entrance level process. So you can also just give payments to it, but just limit it to a certain amount or connect any other component towards it. So um, I think this is interesting for events, but it can be also interesting for groups or for courses. I think it's very interesting and so forth. So this can be basically extended to all different kinds of entities. Um, lastly, so there is a, we're going to do a big push towards product stability. 
um, with adding a lot of new features. I think I also talked already about this for whom, those who've seen it um, at the overall uh, product outlook beginning of the year. We added a lot of new features. We added new, two new big things this year with the monetization and the gamification. And we really want to make sure that those are integrated well, that the deployments run smooth. So um, we we reserved a lot of time this sprint, uh, this this quarter, sorry, to look into this to make sure that the tests are running correctly, that all of the different use cases are working well with each other, and that we can make sure when deployed there is a certain stability and quality standard in the open social product. So a lot of clients, I think, already came into contact with our easy team, which is handling um, client-focused development. So um, for certain use cases, um, especially those MVP features that I mentioned, they are usually done within this team where they can focus really on specific use cases that we then can translate to the bigger product context. As I mentioned, we are still we have been focusing on multi-language and we are still focusing on multi-language. So this was still an ongoing project. And I um, another thing that we want to do is like implementing this translation, as I mentioned. Um, there is a little bit of a difference between translation and multi-language, obviously. So translation is translating content or uh, infrastructure into another language and multi-language is adding multiple language on one platform, which has some issues, especially now focusing on Arabic, where you have to switch from left to right to right to left. So this is also going to be a challenge, but uh, yeah, we're pretty confident that we can solve this in the, in the next month or two. Um, one more thing that, that we are working on in uh, incorporation with different clients is the clo is cloning event. So it is categorized on the templates. We see that, especially with communities that have been set up um, quite fast or that needs to change or are very are working very in a, in a certain cyclist for events or for challenges. This is sometimes difficult to keep a certain consistency, to keep a uh, same naming and to keep the same structure in those events or challenges. So we're gonna work towards having more templates in open social readily accessible. That means also in the future, for example, for the dashboard and other features, but now we're gonna focus on those two, on challenges and events to be able to, well, for now it's not gonna be full templates where you have a library of templates that you can select to, but at least already create a default one and then clone from there and change minimally the name or the date or whatever you want to change on this. So I think this is already going to help to easily replicate certain content. There's much more coming on there. Um, this is a little bit, as I mentioned, because it's a bit more incorporation with partners, with clients and so forth. A little bit more of a moving targets here where we're going to try to keep everybody updated on community talks. I'm going to be try to be more active there on during the um, during the, the, the quarter update as we go, as we have more features ready or more projects uh, fixed that we're going to work on. So I'll uh, I'll try to be there uh, com com uh, communicative about what we what we're planning to do. One of the last, uh, the last, sorry, the last thing I want to talk about for the roadmap for Q3 is the um, front end team. So here we're going to focus again on the groups. As I mentioned, this will be a focus throughout all of the teams. So we're going to uh, see how we can start building APIs and connect all of those entities and content APIs that we're building currently into the group module and create there more freedom for this flexibility that I talked at the beginning about. We hope that we can do this within this decouple process and make it this really easy to create custom flexible groups that fit to all of the use cases. Furthermore, we still have a little bit more left in the chat, which is um, accessibility. So um, we have, a, I think, a great feature portfolio now on, on, the, on the chat, but we want to make sure that this is also accessible. So really from a double, um, double A 
WCAG standard to make sure that um, this is also usable for all um, clients that need to fulfill um, this, this double A standard regulations. Um, okay, so last part of, of this presentation is going to be the initiatives, as, as I mentioned. Um, so we reached out to um, most people about uh, Pendo and the product analytics part that we're doing. So we are looking into being as data-driven as possible and implementing for this detailed product analytics where we can on a very broad level analyze what are people what features are people using what pages are they on how well are certain things adopted are the flows as we imagine it to be and if not where can we remove bot uh, bottlenecks and pain points um the second thing that we are can whether we can do and want to do more and more is see how people use the platform how their sentiments to what the platform is and how much they are um, adopting features, how much they like also those features, not only on a quantitative level, but also on a qualitative level. The last step in this, in this thing, in this journey is really taking those features and the learnings that we have and try to prevent them by creating a better onboarding process. This is also something that I mentioned at the beginning of the year that we wanna focus on. And we wanna try to find common, common structures for every client, how we can implement this guide. So we understand that open social is very in, individual for each of those platforms. Like how does the homepage look like? Where do certain links go to? So there is a lot of like difference in, in how it's set up and what you need to teach people. So we can't really find a one size fits all approach. I think this will not be possible. And I think there will be always some custom work and some individual work per platform of it, uh, um, necessary. So that means that in, in reality, this probably will need to go via the customer success managers. And um, we need to see how we can pre precisely roll this out, but we're gonna try to build a as complete guide as possible to teach people already a few things that are the same everywhere, right? Like who does, how does an event work? How does uh, the profile look like? Where do they need to go for this? Um, guide also towards um, um, manuals on open social. So this is really at the beginning, we really need to look into what are important pages, where are people struggling and try to create guides from there. I think this is going to take definitely the whole quarter and then we're going to see how far we are. It's a little bit explorative and um, we're really looking forward also to test this out with people. If um, any of the clients listening in or um, even people who are there are interested, we are really uh, looking for people who are willing to work with us on this and um, who are interested in, in, in trying it out. So um, the, 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 the first step is uh, that, that Pando is enabled that we reached out for. And then from there, it can be um, yeah, implemented on a per platform base with individual guides. Okay, um, are there any questions from any, anyone? Great. Then, um, I am still there though, right? Big silence. Yes, you are. <laughs> so, um, then I think that that's it for today. Um, uh, I, I, I just wanna say again, like if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us uh, personally on um, community talks uh, to the customer success managers or uh, via Jira. Um, thanks for the input everybody gave uh, the last quarter. Um, hoping to hear from a few people about the guides or um, if you have any other feedback, feel free to contact us and then and have a great day. Thanks for your attention and see you in uh, the next meeting. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Thanks, Moritz. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.